Hey, what's up guys? John here. A judge just issued in California that all homeless people must be taken and housed on Skid Row in LA. And to put this into context, this is a really important period that we're going to be stepping into. We're going to be witnessing the defining moments of a lot of states and where investors are going to be going, opening their business and buying properties due to how their governors are handling the pandemic. If we look at DeSantis, we look at Abbott in Texas and Florida, they're out there opening, they're allowing people to run their businesses. But if you look at New York and California, you're starting to see the erosion with more socialist agendas being pushed forward, which ultimately is going to turn these politicians into, you know, kind of like gods in a sense, where they have more power and they control more votes. And it's essentially going to be a really bad place for a lot of business owners. Now in California, we are witnessing a new universal basic income program that they're pushing, as well as a judge just mandated on Wednesday last week that all homeless people in Skid Row have to be given free housing at the expense of taxpayers. To put this into context, America has 568,000 homeless people. A third of America's population in homeless reside in California alone. Now half of that figure is in LA County. So what we're going to see is a lot of people nationwide struggling financially due to the pandemic, and they're going to be moving to California where there's a free income, free housing, and it's going to turn, I believe, California from a beautiful state to a welfare state. With that being said, please smash that like button. I'm going to dive into the details of what's really happening behind the scenes in California in this video. Please hit that like button and help me share, and let's begin. According to Newsweek, Mayor Libby Schaff, of Oakland, California, announced a universal basic income. It's called no strings. It's a guaranteed income every single month for very low income families. But there's a catch here. The catch is that you can't be white. It's only for people of color. And this, uh, to me, this makes very little sense to me. I don't understand how, if you look a certain way or you identify a certain way, how that would have anything to do with the fact that you need food and housing and shelter and you need money. But this is what they're doing in California, this division, but they're selling this on all the mainstream media outlets everywhere, is that white people are here, people of color are here, you know, if you identify you're here, they wanna divide us as greatly as possible and they want that divide, conquer and control agenda, that narrative. And with a universal basic income, the real problem with this is that when they regulate everyone out of business is that they're essentially turning us into employees and they are the boss. And if we don't do what they say when they say, then ultimately we don't get paid. And that is what they're trying to push, this universal basic income. I think that Big Brother should really just stay out of our lives and allow us to work, provide, and create our own happiness and do what we want to do. But that's not happening right now in this regulated new world that we live in. And I think this universal basic income program that they're gonna push in California could very likely spread to New York, then Chicago, and then hopefully, in their eyes, nationally. That's what they're pushing. They want us to just take a step back and allow them to do what they wanna do. Eric Garcetti wants a $1,000 universal basic income making LA the 12th place to try it in America. Now this happened about 20 years ago in another state. And ultimately what happened was landlords increased the rents. They just increased the rents and funneled the money straight from the bottom to the top. And universal basic income has just had one failure after the next. Now, what this ultimately is gonna do is it makes people like Eric Garcetti look like he's compassionate and he really cares about solving the homelessness problem and putting money in people's pockets. But unfortunately, if you read, it's just not that way at all. LA Mayor Eric Garcetti has proposed giving a universal basic income of $1,000 a month to 2,000 poor local families for one year. Similar proposals have been tried in the last 12 US regions since 1968 and are also gaining interest among other US mayors. Garcetti's proposal would allocate $24 million of the city's budget towards a program called Big Leap an acronym for Basic Income Guaranteed LA Economic Assistance Pilot. So $24 million, and it only helps 2,000 families. So you take that into consideration, 24 million, 2,000 families, LA as a whole has over 66,000 homeless people. So 
you could just do the numbers and realize California, over 150,000 homeless. The amount of money, if they were just to give money to the homeless, you don't even take into consideration all the people that have lost their jobs, their businesses, and just California. If, they, if we didn't accept anyone else and we just did a large universal basic income program, you'd have to increase taxes to a level to where the only companies that could survive and thrive in California would be places like Walmart and the small mom and pop businesses just wouldn't be able to support the tax bracket that would need to be paid to be able to pay for something like this. The families could then spend the money however they please. Garcetti said he hopes the program could provide a model for similar anti-poverty initiatives in other cities. We will have to end America's addiction to poverty for families who can't think past the next bill, the next shift, or the next health problem that they have, we can give them the space to not only dream of a better life, but to actualize it, Garcetti told LIS, a local news site affiliated with Southern California Public Radio. It sounds great to eliminate poverty. Who wouldn't want to do that? But how do you do that when you shut down nearly all businesses in California, when you regulate them out of business and you benefit and you offer huge incentives to large corporations. So their job is not to end poverty or even to alleviate it in some way, shape or form. It's just simply to gain power and control over selling an agenda that's simply unattainable. Similar programs are also being floated in at least four other LA County districts according to LA Times. The LA City Council will have to approve Garcetti's proposal before it becomes reality. Los Angeles County to appeal judges order to shelter homeless people on Skid Row. If you don't know where Skid Row is, it's in downtown LA. It's a really tough area and the many people there that are on Skid Row are not there by choice. They have a, a mental issue. Uh, they, they need psychological help. They're not just simply choosing to be homeless. All the rhetoric, promises, plans, and budgeting cannot obscure the shameful reality of this crisis, the ruling said. LA County leaders say they'll push back against a federal judge's order to house all the people experiencing homelessness in downtown Skid Row, where tents and encampments butt up against pricey lofts, restaurants, and entertainment venues. LA County filed a notice to appeal the ruling Wednesday, a day after U.S. District Judge David O. Carter slammed officials for their failure to address the region's burgeoning homelessness crisis, said Skip Miller, the lawyer representing the county. It will also ask that the Carter's order be suspended, citing judicial overreach into an issue that should be handled by the city and the county. Deciding on how to spend taxpayer money and delivering services to people experiencing homelessness is a legislative, not a judicial function. Miller said in an email statement, the county remains committed to its course of urgent action outside of the court addressing this complex societal issue with the city and its other partners. Carter's order and the city and county to find shelter for all women and children on Skid Row within 90 days. And he said every person experiencing homelessness in the area must have shelter by October. Officials believe thousands of unhoused people are living on Skid Row. Last year, more than 1,400 people were temporarily housed, according to the LA Homeless Societal Services Authority. Carter also told the city auditor to examine all public money spent in recent years to combat homelessness. According to funds from 2016 bond measure, voters approved to create 10,000 housing units over a decade. All the rhetoric, promises, plans, and budgeting cannot obscure the shameful reality of this crisis. The year after year, there are more homeless Angelinos, and year after year, more homeless Angelinos die on the streets, Carter wrote in a 110-page ruling. LA Mayor Eric Garcetti promises this week to pour a billion dollars, a billion dollars into solving the crisis, which has plagued California and especially Los Angeles for generations. The streets of Skid Row have been languished in an urban quagmire of trash, tents, and neglect. Every day, shelters and organizations work to temporarily house people living on the streets, but every day, more and more people fall into homelessness. On average, 207 people are rehoused daily in the county, but 227 people are pushed into homelessness, said Heidi Martson, executive director of LA Homelessness Services. 
authority, an agency created by the city and the county. So you think about this. This is more of like a, a boat has a huge hole at the bottom and you're, you have a bucket. And you're taking the water out of your boat, but ultimately more people are going to pour in, more water is going to pour in. That's essentially what's going to happen. And this homelessness problem will never be solved, ever. The more progress they make, the more attention they're going to bring towards this change and the more problems that LA County, California, and businesses are going to be stuck and struggling with trying to solve. It's a shame to witness this change and transformation of California and it's all being done as a power grab. Gavin Newsom, Eric Garcetti, George Gascon, the district attorney, all of these appointed politicians benefit greatly as they turn California into this welfare state. And the reason being is because they're going to control more votes and more people by mandating these policies. They're going to push businesses out and turn California into a place that people have to live. They don't have an option. There's no other alternative. They're not going to be able to move to Florida or Texas because there's no support and programs like what they're going to have in places like New York and California. Now, this isn't uh, saying that what they're doing is bad. Some people might think this is a good thing. But for me, as an investor, as someone that loves business and capitalism, it makes very little sense to open a business and stay in a place like California going forward because I believe things are only going to get worse in the coming two, three, and four years. And it's a very unfortunate thing. You know, I moved here initially in 2005, started a business in 2008 here, and fell in love with it. But every single year, it just gets harder and harder to stay. What do you think about what's happening in California with the free housing and the universal basic income program they're pushing and all these new agendas? Do you think California has a chance or you think it's gonna continue in the direction that they're pushing? Drop your comments below. Please smash that like button, help me share this video and consider subscribing for more content on personal finance, real estate, business, and of course, money. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Hey, if you'd like to learn how to get started on YouTube, click the link in my bio. It's a free live training. And if you'd like to learn how to invest in cash flowing multifamily real estate for beginners, there's a link there as well. All right, guys.